In this video, which I'm afraid is being recorded on a rather slow machine, so I may have to pause and edit out some breaks. In any case, in this video I'm going to look at interactions in both univariate and multivariate forms of analysis of variance. I'm using my usual simulated data of a marine benthic environment where there is oil pollution potentially coming from three platforms and affecting the fauna, the worms, crustaceans and mollusks living in and on the bottom sediment. And the blue diamonds there are places where I have taken samples. So for the purposes of this video, I'm ignoring the northern platform up here. Now, I don't usually do this, but here we're going to actually go and, when I get to see it, look at the distribution of pollution. And I've tinkered with the settings of the system so that the north pl platform is emetic negligible amounts. There's just nothing showing there. The platform to the east here is leaking a little bit. But there is clearly a big problem at this western platform here. What this means is that if I look at an analysis, an analysis of variance of hydrocarbon, I should see an interaction between impact and controls. The controls are off to the side here, to the east and west, and you can see there's relatively small amounts of pollution in those locations. Now I'm actually doing the analysis of variance on this occasion in a application called Excel Stats. Um, it's available from Deakin University and it's put together by a statistics lecturer there. And it's rather handy for some of the more straightforward kinds of analyses. So obviously what I'm showing here is plots of the means and standard errors for the impact and control or reference locations for Platform 1 and 2. Platform 1 is the one to the west which is leaking a lot as you can see by the height of the bar there and platform 2 is the one to the east which is leaking somewhat but not a, a lot and if you compare platform 2 to the two reference or control locations there's slightly more pollution but not a great deal okay so over to the analysis and here's the analysis of variance table so it's a standard analysis of variance I have not transformed the data. If we actually looked at the data, it's probably going to be log normally distributed, so a log transform might be appropriate. But given the significance of the p-values, um, they're all um, highly significant. So we're looking at the first one there, for instance, is 5 with 14 zeros in front of it. Um, the next two have 13 zeros in front of them, so there's absolutely no no chance that the this significance is being caused by any heterogeneity in the data. The effects are simply too large. So we get a main effect, IVC. There's a difference between impact locations and controls in terms of hydrocarbons. That's obvious with the graphs. We get a platform effect difference between platform 1 and platform 2. That's also obvious from the graphs. And remember these two main effects are looking at averages. So IVC averages the impact platform 1 and platform 2 and compares it to the average for control 1 and control 2. And platform is averaging impact and control for platform 1 and comparing to impact and control for platform 2. The IVC is looking for interactive effects. I tend to say 
a significant interaction tells us something more complicated is going on. And what it means in this case is that we can't just look at IVC or platform when we are looking at these results and interpreting. We need to go and look individually. As we do in this graph, we need to look individually at each reference or control location and each impact location. Now, in a univariate sense, that's relatively straightforward, although obviously it gets more complicated with more complex analyses, such as three-factor designs or when there's random factors. But what about in a multivariate scenario? So here I'm in primer, come back to that in a minute, and I've got the biological data, and I've already run through the analyses just because this is a slow machine. I'm not transforming these data. Remember, in some circumstances, we might take a square root transform to downweight the very abundant species, but in this particular simulation, there's not a great deal of variation among species in abundance. You can see 60s, 70s, up to 600, 700, 800. So the normal routine here would be to do Bray Curtis to get a resemblance matrix as here and then look at the results using an MDS or NMDS non-metric multidimensional scaling. And I haven't bothered to try and make the labels over here more legible. Essentially all of the samples except from the heavily polluted platform are grouped very closely together. Um, so I've got bright red here as the heavily polluted. Um, it's not really quite as obvious, but it's pink for platform two impact and the two controls are blue. So we can see the heavily polluted are separating out and running more or less east, west, left, right across the graph is a trend for increasing hydrocarbons. So we can assume that that's what's driving the pattern. Now, NMDS does not use the distance matrix directly. It actually uses the ranked values. So it goes into that matrix and finds the smallest difference or the closest similarity, calls that one, and then goes through. So potentially some information is being lost here and an alternative is to do a PCO, a principal coordinates analysis. Now this is similar to a PCA, but PCA implicitly uses Euclidean distance, which is not appropriate for biological data. So with PCO, we can select the resemblance matrix or the resemblance measure because PCO runs from the resemblance matrix we select. So here I'm using Bray Curtis. Now, PCO uses the actual distances themselves. So in some cases, it can give better results than NNDS, which can in some cases um, have problems of basically a kind of collapse where one sample is different from all of the others and all of the others collapse into a group. Some of the newer N NMDS algorithms have ways to try and prevent that problem occurring. Um, so advantages and disadvantages. PCO is using the actual distances, so it's using more data. NMDS, because it just uses the ranks, may in some situations be more robust and it's really making less assumptions and requiring less of the data. PCO is, uh, sorry, NMDS is an algorithm, so the computer shuffles things around and the default in primer is to do 25 restarts and pick the best of the resulting solutions with the solutions being measured by stress. PCO in contrast is a calculated 
ordination like PCA. So using the same data we'll always get the same results. But we can also plot vectors on here using primer and I flip the graphs around so that they're in more or less the same orientation. So because PCO is using some more information it's giving us a different spread for the samples from the heavily polluted site but the all of the rest of the samples do basically collapse into a single group although again there is a bit more separation of the slightly polluted samples from the control or reference samples. The other useful thing about PCO is that like PCA we get a measure of how much variation is explained by the axes and because these data are from a relatively simple simulation 95% is explained by the axis going left to right which is predominantly hydrocarbons and 4.7% so nearly all of what is left is explained by changes going from uh, south to north or top to bottom and that is changes in the other environmental factors. Now so far I haven't said anything about interactions but here is a permanova. So this is done break her to similarity using all the samples based on that resemblance matrix it has two factors IVC which is fixed and platform which is fixed and both have two levels and the results there I don't need to go any further than this the results here give p-values of 0 0.001 for all three tests so as in the analysis of variance the IVC factor is significant the platform factor is significant and the interaction is significant. Now the p value here 0 0.001 is coming because basically I've just set it to run a thousand shuffles here so 0 0.001 is the smallest p value that is possible. It means essentially that the pseudo f calculated for the actual data is bigger than all the permutated f values. If I wanted a better more precise estimate of P I could increase the permutations but there's really no point here. So again we've got main effects but we need to look at the interaction to interpret the results. Now looking at the interaction for a univariate analysis is relatively easy. We can do a bar plot as I showed you with Excel stats or a line plot and I can do either of those in any other statistical package but with Permanova we're looking here at potentially hundreds of variables if we've got a diverse community and so how do we go about looking at that interaction in the case we've got here the PCO or the NMDS works relatively well because the heavily polluted site is so different from the others and so we can see that that's where the interaction is coming from. In other situations the source of the interaction may not be anywhere near as obvious. Permanova can pick up interactive effects which are not evident in ordinations like PCO or NMDS. In this situation we can use CAP canonical analysis of the principal coordinates for any resemblance matrix including a permutation test. Don't need a test here because we have already done one using Permanova and down here we're doing an analysis against the groups in a factor so let me have a look at that so 
Uh, while I've got the resemblance matrix selected, I can go permanent over cap and what I'm going to show you is how to work with the interaction. And the way we do that, when the panel eventually appears, okay, groups in a factor, factor for groups or new samples, IVC versus platform. So I went into factors or strictly I went into edit factors and combined the IVC factor with the platform factor to give me an IVC versus platform interactive factor. And so that's what I use for the analysis and in fact it's that combined factor that I've used for plotting the groups on the graphs. Now I'm not doing a permutation test here and I'm just going to cancel out of that and go straight to the results of the cap because otherwise it's going to be a bit slow. Now you can see that this is looking a bit different to the other ordinations and the reason for that is that the cap analysis deliberately tries to separate the samples. More specifically it tries to separate or tries to do an ordination that separates the samples by the groups in the factor. For this reason it is very important that before you do proceed to this analysis you actually do something like a permanova to determine that there is in fact a significant effect to look for because CAP will try to find differences. So what's happening here that is different from the other ordinations is that now the slightly polluted sites or samples are separating out quite substantially from the unpolluted samples. The heavily polluted samples are still separating out from both of those and again going across the graph it's primarily an effect of hydrocarbons or actually now the hydrocarbon effect is going more diagonally so it's separating out the heavily polluted the slightly polluted and the unpolluted samples so this use of cap is helpful for visualizing an interaction which is not evident in PCO or NMDS and it is also helpful in enhancing the separation of groups when a factor or interaction is identified as significant in PERMANOVA. At the moment I've got hydrocarbons and the other environmental variables on the graph here. I could switch and plot on the species data for the species which are most highly correlated with these patterns to see which species were changing in response. Okay, I've just paused and taken a little time to do that. So what I'm plotting on here are the vectors for the species which are changing in response to the hydrocarbons and other variables. Now I can't actually read them here so I would have to make this graph bigger or output this data in some other way um, in order to read off exactly what those species are. But the top one there is worm 7. Um, all of these correlations I've limited it to uh, correlations where the R is greater than 0.99 so there these are highly significant correlations and all of these species are increasing in abundance as we head towards the unpolluted samples. Okay that's about interactions in univariate and multivariate situations.